Hey, <laughs> uh, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. We got a really cool package from El Virgo, oh no, Forest um, Coffee Beans. Hit me up on Instagram saying, hey, would you like to try some samples? I said, hell yeah. Um, and typically I, I do get these offers a lot, which is so cool being that I make content and stuff like that. But when I started to dig in and read about who Forest is, uh, from my understanding, I feel like the, the gist that I got from it is that farmers are really trying to kind of like, not eliminate the middleman, but they, they did say that, but try to make more money, basically, um, based on the fact that they understand what their buyers are looking for in specialty coffee and make that happen on their own. And so they're educating themselves and empowering themselves as farmers to sell directly to roasters like me um, or even cafes or whatever. Um, and they're also understanding roasting. So they're not just having their hands in the soil and processing the beans and all that, but they're also taking that further step getting into branding, marketing. I mean, look at this. It's so pretty the way that they've outlined everything here. Um, I feel like they have a lot of money at their disposal just with all of their, you know, incredible branding and design and stuff like that. And when you can do that, like that's hashtag dreams, right? Like when you can really make your product look amazing and just really nice looking, you know, color labels. <laughs> the fact that I know a little bit about color labels, just I'm like, oh, it takes some money to do this, right? Um, and it takes some foresight and, uh, you know, that extra bit of care that they're doing, that they, they're they moving on that. Um, but anyway, yeah, trying to empower themselves, educate themselves so that they can talk directly to their buyers, I think is a really smart thing. I think this is really interesting that farmers are wanting to be their own advocates and wanting to speak directly to to the buyer this is interesting so I think we're really going to see some exciting things in the coffee industry I think it's a cool time for me to come into coffee industry not knowing anything about and how the way things were done but obviously there has been some uh, upset there's been some change and so I'm really excited to see what Forrest is going to do in the future and when they were saying, as I was reading on the website, we're doing uh, anaerobic processed, uh, I've been cut off this whole time, anaerobic processed, fermentation processed coffees. I was very, very interested. And again, it's from a lot of these are, all these for Colombia, and they make really exciting, tasty, delicious coffees. So we're going to go through the whole gamut of maybe possibly buying some of this green. So as we um, roast these samples, cup them, score them, Okay, we're going to have to score them. If we're going to make a buying decision, we have to be sort of professional about it. We're going to score these coffees. We're going to think about how they're going to fit into the menu, if anything, if they work in as blends, if anything. They, I don't have too much in here, but, you know, we can work with it, I think. If they're going to be a part of our um, green buying decisions in the year 2022, because I'm definitely going to have to buy some green this year. Okay. And something definitely more exciting. I want something more exciting in the menu, something special. All right, let's get to it. So we're going to make cards for each one of these. I'm just going to re reuse these cards. Oh, they also hooked it up with some chocolate. So we'll try this when we actually are like brew some coffee and have a little chocolate pairing with some coffee. How much do we have? Okay, they gave us probably a good 100 gram. 126 gram. Okay, so we can split this in half. We can do 50. I like to give myself as much room as possible to save. Um, this is going to take me back to my three day stodge at Clutch. <laughs> it felt like a three day stodge, except they were very nice to me. So we go 50 grams, right? We write that down 50 grams. Uh, we don't have moisture or anything like that, so it goes like that. Okay? Pink Bourbon. Oh, they spelled it differently too B O R B O N. Bourbon, no U. Interesting. All right. So that's done. L 
Virgo. Now these names that they're giving them, they they feel like they're like this says black condor. That's not a a species name like Bourbon. So they're naming stuff bubblegum. They're they've come up with this all their own, right? So, but they have here the the type of bean Catura slash Columbia. It's just a very different sort of naming thing. Oh, okay, yeah, so it is a blend. A blend. Bourbon. Catura. Okay, it's a little different in the naming. That's all. Now, when you're doing this, you want to be exact so you can see what your weight loss is. Okay? That's that. So I'm going to continue through this. We're going to roast these. And then we're going to take a day. We're going to wait our standard 24 hours. And then we're going to cup them tomorrow. Okay? Um, we're also going to roast these all pretty similarly um, at a light roast, just so we can see what medium elevation. I think they, they are all at a not a crazy elevation, like one's not under a thousand uh, meters. So I, I feel like I can keep the roasting profile for all of them, pretty much. So another thing that you'll want to do if you are buying green is maybe even to score the green. So I just I just found one little insect damaged bean here and you're looking at the beans and seeing you know but if I saw a lot of this I'd be like oh no <laughs> uh, they would definitely kind of in the end I think add up to um, too many defects for the most part when people are sending me stuff this is so small this is not even you know but I'm just saying that's something you would also do uh, normally I'm not saying I skip that I'm, I'm definitely looking at the green Making sure it's well sorted, um, clean, you know, free of any, uh, mostly free of any uh, defects. All right, cool. So that'll do it. And we're going to get set up and we're going to roast these. I love this um, creativity and artistry from these farmers that's coming through in the branding and the marketing. And it's a natural. Wow. 1800 meters. 51 keeps moving around, so I'll just put 51. A blend of Katura and I guess a bean called Columbia. <laughs> Interesting. All right, I'm so excited. Okay, hey, welcome back. Um, all right, so we have roasted these samples from Forest Coffee. I just think it's really interesting reading about how the farmers are taking a little bit more control over their product, learning how to roast, learning learning about the end point in the um, chain of coffee as it goes from, you know, farm to cup, that sort of thing, and, and really trying to step in, step in the middle and take control for themselves so they could make more money um, and set up a more wealthy living for themselves. And, and I think about, you know, setting up generational wealth and things like that. And I'm, I'm pretty excited. At the same time, I'm wondering what that does to, say, companies like Hasea Coffee who we trusted to go to origin, figure that out, and then bring coffee back. They mark up their prices and so on and so forth, right? I wonder if one can, can do we have to eliminate the sort of quote unquote middleman? Interesting. Uh, that could be a sort of controversial subject. It's not really my say, I'm not in the middle, I'm, a, I'm the roaster. But it is important for me to understand things like that and know where the industry is going and kind of understand. And we'll talk about stuff like that. I think that would be interesting to talk about in a different video, but I want to try to do this blind. Now, because I'm possibly going to buy one of these coffees, right? This year, I think I'm going to buy one. I'm, I'm trying to move through at least two, co two of these coffees right now. Um, and I think about buying one for sure. I don't know how much they cost right now, but I don't want to let that influence me in terms of my scoring. So I'm going to try to do this as professionally as I can in a way that the system changes what you guys have seen. I talk through the cupping process. I'm talking to camera or I'm talking to you. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how I'm going to set up and then I'm going to turn off the camera and then really focus and dedicate the solid, you know, hour that it's probably going to need to take me to score these coffees, trying to be unbiased. And then we'll come back on camera and then we'll talk about the scores and all that stuff. Okay. So I want to give these coffees my undivided attention. So I'm not going to talk you through and be like, mm, I'm not going to do that. Because <laughs> when you're scoring coffee and you're trying to be objective, 
you're not doing any of that. You're being very quiet. You're keeping your, your ideas and your scores to yourself. You don't, you don't shout them out, especially if there's other people in the room copying with you because you could influence them. There's some kind of weird effect that happens when you say, oh, this tastes like strawberry, and you're just saying that to yourself. That other person can't not help but think, oh, yeah, do I taste strawberry? And if I don't, like, what's wrong with me? All that stuff, it's distracting. Okay, so I'm going to go through this process, and we'll come back, and I'll see you in a minute. So I'm back. How long did that take me? 20 minutes. Not bad. I'm getting, I'm getting quicker. I'm getting a little bit faster. Uh, this was a little tough for me. I think I really need to work on being able to like give vocabulary to what I'm tasting instead of going, hey, I, I can delineate which one's better for me, like this versus this versus this. I think I can tell like kind of like what's better, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but I have trouble really pointing out a real like flavor anchors, I'll call them, like orange. This tastes like orange um, or has orange notes or whatever. And then what kind of orange and stuff like that. I think that would just come with like time and I have to keep doing this skill. This is a very tough skill. Um, but anyway, I'm reluctant to release publicly before I ask how much these coffees are <laughs> for the farmers. Um, I think they might have the prices or whatever, but this is something I learned from Mike. He's like, you don't really want to let them know which is your favorite because it'll just so happen that the favorite is the most expensive, <laughs> right? So I'm going to release this. I'm going to say it here on camera. It's not like I'm live or something, but I, I'm letting you know that that's my thought process because that's important. I think that's important as a green buyer. You know, I'm, I'm wearing all the hats, so I have to learn. And this is how I count them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I have my scores. So now what I'm gonna do is let you know which one scored the highest, this one. Second highest, this one. Third, third place, this one. And um, fourth place, this one, yep. Last place, this one, okay. Now, which one would I likely buy without even looking at what these are? Because this is a supposed blind tasting, right? And it's great because I don't remember crap. <laughs> See, short-term memory working again. Which one would I buy? Possibly this one, possibly this one. That's what I think is special enough for me to consider going through and jumping through the hoops of, of ordering, ordering from somebody who is, um, not local, because we now have to think about shipping costs, right? So if I'm gonna pay that extra dollar for shipping and all the other like, maybe even waiting a long time, is it special enough for me to wait, right? And the cost and all that stuff, we're gonna have to see. We have to see the price later, but now we get to see and reveal what these are. So let me tell you the scores, okay, from the two that I would actually buy. 90.5 for me. Now, remember, I, I think I score generously because I'm not, I'm new, right? <laughs> I'm a new scorer. Um, and then this one, like it, 88.5, solid, right? For me. So that's my score on my Clouch evaluation form. This is not the official SEA form. And I feel like I did that in good time, meaning like I was able to finish at 20 minutes scoring these. So I'm getting better at, at going yes or no. Better or good than this one. Better or good than the last one, right? So those are the decisions that you're making um, and having your scoring actually make sense and not just pulling it out from the air. It's actually based in what you're tasting and at the appropriate time. So I'm not waiting till 30 minutes, 40 minutes, <laughs> an hour like I used to, whereas when you wait that long, you could actually um, kind of miss the tasting notes because the temperature isn't like typically what people are tasting. Like obviously I wouldn't score this at being cold coffee, but I would like to see how it changes throughout a couple of time and I, and I kept it within 20 minutes. That's pretty good for me. That's a win for me as a cupper, as a, as a cupper learning to cup. Okay, I'm excited. What are they? Runner up, runner up. 88.5, what is it? 
Pink Bourbon, washed. Yeah, I've had this coffee before, or a version of it, not from them. I've had it before, and I thought it was amazing. I got it from Bodhi, and I wonder if it's the same. It could be. So it's a pink Bourbon, and they don't spell it with the U. So is it Bourbon? I don't know. I don't know if that's the difference. It's wash process. It's from the Huli, Hula, Hula, Huli, sorry, <laughs> 1800 meters from the Partner Series. Um, and that's this coffee right here, 88 points. So we will put that right here for 88 points, 88.5. Don't forget the 0.5. All right, the winner for me, a very special coffee, incredibly special, is what? Bubble gum. Oh, wow. Natural. All right, bubble gum. They have the cutest naming little uh, thing going on over there. Bubble gum, right here. 1800 meters from the Caldas, Katura, and a Columbia blend. It's a natural process. Um, I'm guessing some sort of fermentation is going on here. I don't know what. It said natural. Um, when I was roasting this on the sample roaster, I made sure to pick a natural process or a natural profile with the sample roaster. And then for the washed ones, I just used a generic washed light, you know, process on the on the sample roaster. Let's take a look at this green. They're pretty interesting. They look a little different. We know it's a blend, right? They look pretty well sorted in terms of their size. So, you know, it roasted pretty evenly. Okay. Different though, right? Naturals tend to look a little different. What was interesting about this on the sample roaster, I got a 27% a weight loss on this. And I was like, huh. But they looked really well developed. It's a nice light roast, you know? Beans are not too swelled, everything like that. Um, okay, let's talk about flavor from this winning coffee. You got berries, fruits, exotic, spices. I gave it a nine on the flavor, and that's what kind of boosted it up. And I said overall, overall, it's a nine for me, just how, how special it is. Um, that fermentation process, I can taste it. What are they doing? I'm gonna read more up on it. I'm gonna read more. I'm gonna read more on it. <laughs> let's talk about, let's try now to, since we're now talking to camera, kind of like nail down some flavors. Mm. The acidity is very vibrant. Blood orange, sangria, not white sangria, red sangria. So we got apples, oranges, cherries, strawberries, red, pinks, and a nice little, hello, pinks, reds, strawberries, blueberries. Um, I was talking about the bitter thing before I got that call. Let me see. It's a really like dark chocolate. There's cinnamon in there. There's clove in there. Sweet, um, great body, very smooth. People like to say that word smooth and I think that's appropriate here. There's a lot of layers. It lingers here, the acidity lingers here on the sides of the tongue. It's a really nice long finish. So it stays with you and, and the, the flavor that stays with you is that um, high quality dark chocolate um, and then sort of like a baked berry pie is in there. And then, you know, let me take you through the beginning of this coffee. So I was like, the fragrance and aroma, it was an 8.5. 8 Certainly, like, they all smell like coffee. And now as I was going through them, this one automatically stood out. And that's fun when you have a standout. Because <laughs> if, if they were all very similar, it would be very tough. And it's, it's almost stressful. You're like, oh, which one is the good one? This one was a clear standout from the very beginning on the fragrance, which is not putting water in. You're just smelling the grounds. And I got berries. I got um, berry pie. I was already smelling that sweetness and sort of baked berries sort of thing. Um, and pie. And then 
when we put the water in and then when we broke the crust, it was still an 8.5. It still smelled of um, that tinge of like a wine element that I've smelled before in, in fermented coffees. And I was like, this is nice. Wow. And then I put, wow, berry pie. <laughs> and then flavor, when I tasted it, I was like a 9. It was like, woo. Berry, fruity, exotic, spicy, aftertaste, 8.5. Got that wine effect with that smiley face, lingering, resonant. There's that a little bit of a dry element in the um, that bitterness of that, like from, from uh, dark chocolate. The acidity is really great. I think I could have given this a little bit of a higher score, actually. Um, thinking back, I gave it an 8.5. It probably should have been like an 8.75 for that nice, vibrant acidity. The mouth feels really great in 8.75. Balance is really good at 8.75 and overall a 9. I think, actually now thinking back, maybe I might be able to score this even higher, but at the time that's what I was feeling. And I was trying, I was trying to not be so generous because I'm thinking I'm too generous when I score. Mm. Wow. All right, thanks, Sean. Now, this was, one sample, 50 grams done on the sample roaster. Now that I'm letting it cool, I feel like definitely when you run a full batch of it, you have a lot more control over it. I feel like the middle could use a little bit more attention. Now that I'm tasting it, there's this sort of hollowness. So I, I'm, I'm okay with my score. I feel like it's a nine for sure. It's in, it's in the nineties for sure, but maybe my roasting could even help it more so that it it's a no-brainer maybe over 92 93 points or something like that um but yeah i only did one and i wanted to save it because i was like what if i like these you know i want to save it for myself to drink they call it bubble gum they don't tell you like remember the coffees from coffee net they'll tell you 200 hours fermentation so now they have little secret you know, secret recipes, little trade secrets, and the farmers are getting wise. They're getting smart. <laughs> They're not giving away the farm anymore. And now they call it bubble gum, which gives you a little indication, but when you taste it, and if you are familiar, and you, you got to be familiar with fermentation processed coffees, you would recognize there's some kind of fermentation going on over here, which is very, very good. All right, so that was the video. I'm very excited. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to inquire with them and um, probably give you an update video on something like that. But that was really fun. Thanks for hanging out. And we will see you in the next video tomorrow. Peace out. Bye.